I am here again at Baker Creek Farm and today we're going to be talking about heirlooms that you can grow as a market gardener. Yes, I've been interested in heirlooms for quite some time and I know a number of you are interested in growing heirlooms as well and some of you are doing market gardens and you want to know how you can implement bringing in heirloom varieties into your system on your market garden, on your farm. And today we're going to talk, of, talk to one of the farm garden managers here at Baker Creek and he's going to talk to us about heirloom varieties that you can do as a market gardener. Green friends! Our family sold almost everything, including our house in the city, to start a farm in the country. Join us as we share with you our adventures while we discuss farming, fitness, and everything in between. And don't forget, we live in a year too! We are Farm Fit! This month we are giving away power packs that include garden tools, Baker Creek seeds and books and we're going to be giving these away to our top three most active subscribers. So check out all our videos and comment as much as you like. Kendall, how are you doing? Great, how are you Mike? Doing well. Good. Excited, ready to hear about heirloom varieties that we can do as market gardeners. So, so it looks here like you got a few eggplant going. Yes, we're working with some eggplant here and we carry quite a few different varieties of eggplant. Um, probably the number one that's used for uh, market is probably going to be the Black Beauty. Now the Black Beauty is going to give you a nice big black eggplant like you expect when you go to a market, right? When you go to a market you picture in your mind an eggplant most of the time you're going to be picturing a nice big round long black eggplant. Yes. Um, another really good one is called Florida Market. Okay. I mean the name goes hand in hand with market gardening, right? So um, that's a pretty heavy producer and a really tasty variety as well. Now I think my personal favorite is going to be the Thai Long Green. Okay. Now it only gets to be about this big around, uh, but they'll get close to about a foot long occasionally. Okay. So um, that's probably my personal favorite. Fantastic. And for those of you who are market gardeners, we know that we want to make sure that we maximize the crops that we have growing on our, in our gardens and on our farms. So we want to make sure that they're prolific and that they grow quickly. So that is some of the things that we're looking for. And uh, those eggplant varieties that Kendall mentioned definitely fit those descriptions. Let's go look at some of the other ones. You have So this pepper we have right here is called the fish pepper and it's a really old heirloom variety. I believe that it came from Monticello. Don't quote me on that. But okay. I believe it came from Monticello. Thomas okay. Jefferson uh, grew this one okay. um, and it has this really beautiful foliage. It's really nice for um, uh, ornamental plantings, has nice variegation as well as uh, it's edible too and it has these really nice striped, striped peppers that look really nice and they, they turn a bright red color. Um, after they're a little little beyond ripe, um, but you're going to want to pick them at this color, and that would be really awesome at a market. Wow, are these really hot or? They're relatively spicy. Okay. Yeah, they're, they're. I would say that they're not quite, not quite habanero heat. Maybe okay. a little bit around the jalapenos scale. Okay. So these would be some good ones to kind of enhance a dish for if someone's cooking with this for a culinary purpose. Absolutely, and if you could if you could put it on raw and get some of that that nice color on top too, man, that that would that would make a dish look really great, nice. Great, great. I like spicy things, but I'm not just going to go ahead and eat this one straight right now. These might be tougher than I am. It's so, pretty spicy. Yeah. <laughs> so, not in the mood for it right now. <laughs> That's great. So this is um looks like this one is definitely prolific. I see a lot oh, of fruit on here. Oh, a lot yeah. of peppers growing right. on this plant. And we're getting kind of late in the season, so we do have some some older peppers that we needed to have already getting off, got off of here. Okay. Uh, but there is still quite a bit of fruit. That's great. Yeah, that is... Isn't that beautiful? That is very beautiful. That is fantastic. And what's the name of this one again? The fish pepper. Fish pepper. That's right. Ooh, and you got some more peppers around here. Let's, let's see some of those. All right, let's go check them out. And what do we have here? What this, pepper is this one? This one is the Murasaki Togarashi. Okay. And this is a Japanese variety that we have. I don't uh, think I it, could pronounce that. <laughs> <laughs> and it, it has really nice foliage too. You can see on some of these leaves they have like, uh, some of the veins are kind of turning purple. The yeah. stems are really purple. Really neat. The fruit itself is kind of a purplish black color. Okay. When it gets a little bit beyond ripe they kind of turn to this bright red color. Okay. 
um, but it's extremely prolific. I don't know if you can see in the video how just how pr prolific these are, but they are just completely loaded. They we have sure a lot are. of really old fruit that needed to be picked. But so this one is it spicy? No, not at all. Okay, oops, Did pick the wrong thing. So you can eat them red and sure and black. Sure, yeah, no problem. I th I think historically they would be picked picked black. Okay. Um, but you could have a mix in a, a little pint jar or something, and that would look real nice. Fantastic. And since this one isn't spicy, I'm going to go ahead and try this one. <laughs> that one's good. Got a real nice sweet pepper flavor. It sure does. Mm -hmm. This is excellent. And extremely prolific, man. It's just completely loaded. That's fantastic. That's great. Yeah. Do you want to check out the, the Chinese five color? That would be great. All right. Okay. All right, so on this one, this is the Chinese five color. Okay. You can get five colors of fruit all on the same plant. And so if we move these aside, you can kind of see the diversity in color. Now they do, once they start getting older, they start turning one solid color. This whole spot is red. There's a spot over here that's entirely purple. So they do all become a uniform color. Okay. Um, this one is quite spicy though. You want to try it? No. I'm <laughs> But the colors are very vibrant. It is very beautiful. Oh, it's and, one of my uh, favorites. To me, the colors just scream out that it's going to be spicy. <laughs> <laughs> right? It, it looks ornamental, and typically the ornamental ornamental peppers are going to be spicier peppers. Usually. Okay, that's good to know. That's yeah. good to know. But once again, this is very prolific. You can see all these peppers here. Uh, definitely looks like one that would be good to grow as a market gardener. It would look really nice in one of those little pint sized jars that with would. all five colors in there. That sure would. Absolutely. That would be great. Perfect for markets. <laughs>we are here at the Baker Creek store or is it the seed store the yeah seed store? okay mm -hmm. yeah we're, we're here checking out some some different packs and uh, I went ahead and pulled two of some of the most prolific uh, bigger peppers that we have outside we looked at some of the spicier smaller sweet peppers okay um, but in here I went ahead and grabbed some of the bigger peppers we have the, the horizon pepper okay that's a really good really prolific one 73 day pepper okay. uh, it's relatively quick for a pepper um, so that's nice, and then the, the Ozark Giant as well. That one has really, really good um, thick flesh, okay. holds up well, um, and is really prolific. Fantastic, so those would be some meatier peppers that you could offer to your customers, or if you're just growing them for yourself, for those of you who are watching this video and you're just a uh, backyard gardener or whatever, those would be good ones that you could have and serve your family. Absolutely, you can see behind us the, the wide variety of peppers that we have. This whole section right here is just peppers. It is a lot of peppers here. <laughs> wow. Oh, I don't even have a guess. <laughs> Alrighty, so uh, you said you have some also some squash, maybe cucumbers. Yeah, maybe we can we step can over here and check out some cucumbers and squash. Great. So similar to the peppers, you guys have a lot of varieties of squash as well. Absolutely. We, ha we have an enormous variety of squash. And I went ahead and pulled a few of uh, the most productive um, and most tasty varieties that would be good for market. Okay. Um, first, I have the Gilbert Englisher custard squash. That one's really good, and I actually ate that one last night for dinner. Um, so I can tell you firsthand it's delicious and very productive over a long season. Okay. Um, I also pulled the classic early golden crook neck. Everybody's familiar with that one. Yep. It's pretty quick and pretty productive. Um, but this is the first first seed I ever bought from Baker Creek was a lemon squash. Oh, really? It is extremely productive hmm. and insect resistant. It's even kind of hard to keep up with. Wow. Mm -hmm. That definitely sounds like one we need to add. I've never seen that before. <laughs> it's it's a little bit smaller, but it would still be really good for a market because it comes comes and goes so quick. It's it's sounds, really perfect. Sounds great. I also pulled this the yellow squ uh, straight neck, okay. similar to the crook neck. Okay. Um, maybe just a little bit quicker than, okay. than the classic crook neck. Okay. Um, and the golden zucchini. I mean, look at how beautiful that golden zucchini is. I love that golden color. It looks right? fantastic. It's it's pretty pretty quick and productive too. More of a bush type. So typically the bush types are just a little bit quicker than vining types. Fantastic. Absolutely. Do you want to do you want to check out some of the tomatoes? Then? Definitely. Okay. Excellent.
I'm excited to see the tomatoes. For a lot of market gardeners, tomatoes are one of the most profitable items that we have on the farm. So can't wait to see what you got for us here. Absolutely. You can, I mean, you can see we have all of our tomatoes based on color. Purple, red, yellow, green, striped. We have colors of the rainbow. I mean, it's amazing That's in tomatoes. Great. So I went ahead and picked some of the uh, most popular or oldest varieties. Um, we have the cr original Creole. That's what a lot of uh, your heirloom red tomatoes um, are, are coming from. Um, that's a really, really heavy producer. Really delicious. It has that homegrown tomato feel, nice taste, um, and really productive. So, um, of course, the classic Cherokee purple. Everybody is pretty familiar with the Cherokee yes. purple. Really high in anthocyanins. Really high, heavy producer. Um, so that that's a great classic. I love that one. It's, <laughs> it's one of my favorites too. Um, the yellow pear is one of the oldest yellow varieties that we carry. Wow. Um, it's it's a really nice, really productive, and yet relatively small. Okay. Uh, but it's really nice for kids. Kids love yeah. picking it. And same with the the red fig. They're relatively similar in size and shape. Okay. Um, just kind of your, your color preference and flavor preference. They do taste just a little bit different. Okay. Both extremely productive. Okay. Almost can't keep up with them. They're great. Um, so the, those are the four four tomatoes that I picked uh, today to show off to you. Um, we could move over and see cucumbers now if you'd like. That'd be great. So All we're right. providing, he's providing us with a lot of great information on heirloom varieties that we can do for mar as market gardeners. And this is great because we also, in doing this, we ha can actually have a hand in preserving these rare seeds as well. And these are seeds that just by saving the fruit, you can save the seed. So just keeping a little bit extra to the side uh, outside of the what we sell and give to our customers, just keeping that to the side is an actual way that we can preserve these seeds by saving just a couple, just a couple few uh, pieces of the fruit, right? Absolutely. I would, I would bet in a creel about like that, you're probably going to get 50 or 100 seeds. So there That's you go. 50 or 100 more plants from one fruit. So there you go. You can <laughs> be more, uh, profitable as a market gardener, but also have a hand in preserving these rare seeds, these rare varieties of, of plants and produce. So in the past, a number of market gardeners, or a lot of market gardeners, and probably even homesteaders as well, are very familiar with growing the market more cucumbers. And you guys offer this cucumber as well. Uh, but you also offer a number of other varieties of cucumbers. We do. My, my personal favorite is going to be the lemon cucumber. Um, it's very productive, has pretty small fruits, but still has that great uh, cucumber taste by being very productive as well. The Parisian pickling, a classic pickle cucumber. Um, I mean, it's it's very productive as well, but gives you a little bit different flavor for your pickles. Okay. Um, oh, this is another personal favorite of mine, the Mexican sour gherkin. It produces really, really small fruits, um, but it produces really, really heavy. Okay. They look like tiny watermelon, and they taste just like cucumber. Okay. So that'd be real nice for a little pint pint jar. Too. Yeah, yeah. Um, the straight eight. That's another pretty classic really heavy yield or uh, relatively mildew resistant okay um, but it, it would also be very good for for a market being as uh, as productive as it is okay so those those would be my suggestions uh, for your market gardeners at home Kendall thank you very much for sharing with us a lot of these different varieties that we can grow as market gardeners and for people who want to come purchase some of these seeds I know they can come visit this store but what are some other ways that uh, our viewers can come purchase seeds from you guys Absolutely. Uh, well, we do most of our sales online, uh, www.rareseeds.com. Uh, you can also order our catalog that we send out every year, which they're in the process of making right now. Okay. So be sure to check out our catalog. Be sure to check out our website and uh, come up, come on in and check out our seed store. And thank you very much for coming. Yes, yeah, my pleasure. <laughs> and that information that Kendall just provided, I'll provide that for you in the show notes below. So make sure you click on that. Check it out. Thanks for watching. We'll see you next time, and remember, grow on. Thanks for watching. Feel free to leave a comment below, even if it's just to say, hey. Also, make sure you don't miss any of our new videos. So, subscribe and sign up to receive notifications each time we release a new video. Also, you may want to check out these videos right here. And also, check us out on Instagram, Facebook, and Twitter. See you next time.